Welcome to the Success Talk Show, the podcast for ambitious leaders who want to get their best results and create a workplace for their teams to thrive. Each week, we share practical advice to help you accelerate your success and grow as an inspiring leader. Now, here's your host, leadership success coach, Donna Siriani. Welcome to another episode of the Success Talk Show. This is Donna Siriani. This is the third episode in a series where I'm covering all 15 of the emotional intelligence skills. In this episode, Emotional Intelligence, Do What You Love, I'm going to cover the skill of self-actualization, or you know, to put it more simply, it's the pursuit of meaning or striving to achieve your full potential. But before I dive into the skill, I want to let you know, if you missed the first few episodes in the series, you can find them at the successtalkshow.com and you could subscribe either there or in iTunes. I encourage you to go back and listen to them, especially the first episode, What Every Leader Must Know, because I share fascinating facts about emotional intelligence and how it relates to your own professional success. And if you'd like to download the list of all 15 skills, you can go to my website, successcompassstrategies.com forward slash emotional dash intelligence. Now, I want to share with you this, this particular skill has a lot of meaning for me personally, because many years ago, when I did my own soul searching for the contribution I most wanted to make, I became clear that my personal mission, my purpose, was to help others reach their full potential. It's really been a driving force in my career for a very long time. It drives what I do and why I do it. Now, according to Gallup, 70% of U.S. employees are not engaged at work. That means, you know, almost three out of four people dread going to work every day. So if you're one of the 70%, who dread going to work, you know, maybe you feel dissatisfied with what you're doing. You may not feel like you're making the contribution that you know you're capable of making. You know, it could be that you're hungry to do so much more, but you're really not sure what to do differently. You know, it's possible that you feel bored, frustrated, disappointed, confused, you know, maybe you're just stressed out. And this really goes right to the heart of much of my work as a leadership success coach. Really, for most of my clients, this is exactly why they come to me. This is exactly why they want coaching. They're hungry to make a bigger contribution. They may feel stuck, but they really want to get back on track. They're ambitious. They want to do more. They're committed to do whatever it takes to achieve their full potential. So this particular skill really goes right to the heart of what I'm certainly passionate about. And it might be a skill that you want to take a closer look at to see what could you be doing to strengthen this for yourself. So let's talk about what self-actualization is. Now, you might be thinking about that term. It's kind of a fancy psychology term, right? You might have learned about it in school, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And if you remember the visual, there was a pyramid. And you know, if you work your way up the pyramid at the basic level is your, are your physical needs, you know, for air, water, food. And as you work your way up the pyramid, you know, then it goes to safety, right? You need to feel safe and self, and then then there's love and belonging, esteem. And at the top of the pyramid was self-actualization. And so, yes, that is the skill that we're talking about today. But I want to define what it is a little bit more. It's really about finding purpose and enjoyment in your role. It's persistently trying to improve yourself, sort of always trying to grow your abilities. Um, It's about pursuing meaningful activities. It's those things where you feel that it really resonates. You feel like you're making that contribution. It's about performing to your full potential. Um, In fact, I will just pause there and say, you know, nobody ever comes to me for coaching and says, I really need to scale back. I'm really giving too much of myself. I need to figure out how to work less hard. I need to figure out 
how I can really downscale. No, everybody that I talk to, that I work with, they're trying to figure out a way. They know in their heart there's a way for them to make a bigger contribution. And then self-actualization really becomes about feeling satisfied with that contribution and enthusiastically committing really to short and long-term goals to make that happen. It all adds up to pursuing a rich, enjoyable, and meaningful life. Now, as a leader, you will inspire your team when you're striving to reach your potential and you're doing these things. You're inspiring them to do the same. You're inspiring them to strive for their potential, right? You set a good example. They take their cue from you. When you're striving to do better and raise the bar for yourself, you foster those same habits with the people around you. Now, if you don't do this, if you don't strengthen that self-actualization muscle, it may actually hold you back and it may hold your team back. Because if you don't have that drive to achieve great performance, you may not be achieving what's ultimately possible. Now, let's take this one step further in terms of how this can impact your professional career, your path as a leader, self-actualization, it's also a key driver in four of the primary leadership competencies of, and I'll list them for you, authenticity, right? You need to show up as an authentic person. You're not trying to be somebody else. You know your skills, you know your strengths, weaknesses, you're, you know, very genuine. Okay. So authenticity, coaching, right? When you're coaching someone else, you're coaching a member of your team, you're coaching somebody else in the organization. As a coach, self-actualization is so important, right? It makes sense. Pursuing, growing your abilities. That's really at the heart of what coaching is about. You're trying to empower someone to grow to their full potential. So it'd be really hard for you to be as good a coach as a leader as you would like to be if you're not strengthening this muscle for yourself, if you don't have that mindset. Okay. The third competency is insight. And the last is innovation. Now, these are the four competencies that are most required of leaders. That makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because authenticity, coaching, insight, and innovation, really at the heart of all four of those competencies, one of those key ingredients is being able to grow your abilities, strive to do more, strive for a bigger contribution. Those are the key elements. So what I want to do is I want to give you a few tips of how you could strengthen this skill for yourself. Now, tip number one, start by asking yourself, how satisfied are you with the quality of the time that you spend in each of these, the four areas I'm about to mention. And when I say how satisfied, you could use a scale of one to 10 with 10 being, you know, highly satisfied. And the four areas are work, family, friends, and alone, right? So how satisfied are you with the quality of time you spend at work? The quality of time you spend with family, with friends. What about the quality of time you spend alone? Are you satisfied with how you're spending your time? You know, are you engaged in activities that give you a feeling like you're making progress, you're expanding your abilities, that has meaning for you, right? Or are you spending it doing really sort of guilty pleasures, mindless, you know, it's, it's, it goes beyond self-care. It's actually, you know, you feel like it's wasted time. So how satisfied are you? Tip number two, for each of those four areas, identify what are one or two short-term goals and one or two long-term goals. Now, for short-term, it could be the next three to six months. And long-term could be, you know, anything more than six months. Could be 12 months or longer. So what are one or two goals, short-term and long-term, for each area, work, family, friends, or your alone time. You know, what are some goals that you might have of how you could improve, you know, what you're spending your time on? So for an example, let's say when you asked yourself this question, you're like, you know, 
My alone time, mm, on a scale of one to 10, I'd give it maybe a three or a four. I'm really not using my time wisely. I'm so tired when I get home from work. I barely have time for my family. I really am not spending a lot of quality time on my own doing any of the things that I love. So you might really admit to yourself that there's room for improvement. So maybe you'll set a couple of goals on what you'd really like to be doing in some of your spare time to rejuvenate and feel that the time's well spent. So we'll talk about more about that in a minute. So tip number three, and this goes right to the heart of what we're talking about, is you want to identify your top passions and try to incorporate them regularly into your role. Now, if you're not sure how to identify your passions, I actually go deep into this with my clients. I use a methodology. It's real simple, but it's called the passion test. And In my programs, I go deep on this. I actually conduct workshops on it. But right, just to give you a really quick tip, if you want to take a look at one of my YouTube videos, go into YouTube, search for Donna Siriani, and look for Discover and Leverage Your Passions. And I did a short video just to get you started on this. So there's some quick tips there for you. I take you through a real short two or three tips. I go through a more methodical step-by-step approach in my Acclimate to Accelerate program, but this will get you started. Now, most of the people that I'm coaching, they really cannot identify their passions. They might have some vague ideas of what they are, but basically you can identify what they are. And again, go to that YouTube video and I'll walk you through some steps. But most of the leaders that I coach I will tell you that a couple of the things that they have for passions that they really love and would like to spend more time doing usually revolve around coaching, just like what I have as one of my passions. One of my passions is helping people reach their full potential. It's really one of my, it's my purpose in my career. And they want to spend more time coaching their team. Maybe one of their passions is around, you know, nurturing um, relationships, They may have a passion for process improvement or, you know, from a work point of view, there's something they just love doing. And the question is, how do you build more of that into your role so that every day, every week, you know, you're putting time into the things that really bring you joy and satisfaction, that bring you meaning. So I want to share a quick story with you. When I was living and working in Singapore, I was responsible for uh, client services for Asia, and I was in technology uh, within financial services, and our firm provided post-trade settlement processing solutions. Now, I can't honestly say that I was passionate about post-trade settlement processing, right? But I was passionate about managing large projects, making big improvements. I already had this as my goal, my mission to help people reach their full potential. I love learning. So I had staff in seven different countries within Asia, and I spent about 75% of my time traveling. My day-to-day responsibilities, you know, there were times, many times, when it really wore me down. It was, you know, a pretty demanding job. And I could very easily have felt disenchanted with my role because it just it was it just took a lot out of me but where i found my energy and passion was deliberately allocating time to focus on coaching others i also spent quite a bit of time on learning and i'll talk about that in a minute but think about for yourself you know coaching might not be what is on your list but whatever it is for a top passion something you love to do, you absolutely need to ask yourself how you can incorporate more of it into your role. That's tip number three. It's really good. It really makes a difference. Um, Now, for most of my clients, we will actually go that extra step. I encourage you to ask yourself, you know, how much time would you need to spend incorporating your passions for it to feel satisfying? It could be if it's even just two or three hours a week, it could feel like a lot. So just ask yourself, you know, what would make you feel a lot more satisfied about the time you're spending there? 
Now, the next tip, tip number four, is find a new challenge. It could be a new initiative, a new program. Maybe it's a shift you want to make in the organization. It could be a cause you believe in, but something challenging and meaningful to you. Again, if we go back to the definition for self-actualization, it's finding purpose and enjoyment in your role. It's persistently trying to improve yourself, always trying to grow your abilities. It's pursuing meaningful activities, performing to your full potential, you know, realizing that you're stretching yourself and you feel like you're on the right track and you want to feel satisfied, right? Because Again, it adds up to a rich, enjoyable, meaningful life. So if you feel like something's missing, you may want to experiment a little bit and see what could I be spending time on that would really resonate. I know a lot of people will find great satisfaction in volunteering, right, for different types of charitable organizations. And at work, you know, if there's a mentoring program, you know, mentoring others is one that's really a very common or popular initiative. So for you, you need to think about what is important to you. What's the shift you'd like to make? Now, I want to give you just another example from my own history, going back to that particular time in my life when what I was doing for work, it was just very stressful. I didn't necessarily enjoy the work itself. What I enjoyed was was knowing that I was really moving the organization forward to create bench strength. So in my personal time, because I had so little of it, (laughs) my personal time, I took courses that fascinated me, really didn't have anything to do with work, but it gave me that feeling, that sense I was improving myself, learning, and I took courses. Now, let me just tell you, while I was living in Singapore, I was living between the financial district and Chinatown. And I became fascinated with feng shui. And I was so curious what it was. And I wanted to make sure that while I was living in Asia, I took the time to learn some things that I would bring back to the U.S., things that I probably wouldn't learn if I was living in the U.S. So I got certified actually in feng shui and gemstones and pearls. And for feng shui, I actually flew to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. I spent a week of my vacation time getting certified in feng shui along with 35 other people from around the world. And we all trained with a very famous feng shui person personality. She was like the Oprah Winfrey of feng shui. Like everybody, everybody, you know, knew her. She was famous, you know, magazine, you know, events with thousands of people. But anyway, there were 35 of us that traveled to her home office to get trained by her. And, you know, I also took online courses. I got certified in pearls in Hong Kong. And these were not work related, right? But they tapped into one of my passions, which is learning. You know, learning is one of my passions. It's also one of my strengths. And it led me to meet so many interesting people. Now, the benefit from my my coworkers was that I could coach them on their feng shui. I bought dozens and dozens of strands of pearls for people I work with. They wanted them for their family and friends, right? So there was some side benefit. But my point is, once you get clear on your strengths, your passions, and what might really tap into that, then you can make sure that whether it's with work, family, friends, or your alone time, how can you allocate some time to those endeavors so that it's helping you make progress, grow your abilities, and really makes you feel like you're enjoying your life and all areas of your life. So the last example, when I mentioned learning, So do what you love, right? That's what this whole episode is about. Do what you love. When you do what you love, you're tapping into your strengths. Now, I talked quite a bit about how to identify your strengths back in episode one. The skill was called self-regard. It's getting really clear at what you're good at. Because once you're leveraging your strengths, that's where you're going to really achieve your greatest potential. So go back and listen to that if you missed it. Do what you love is about tapping into your strengths, your natural talents, your passions, right? Your values. So once you get clear on that, 
think of it as this is a skill that you need to fine tune and improve and strengthen so that you show up not only getting your best results, achieving the type of contribution you most want to make, but it helps you to feel satisfied. Remember the statistic I shared with you, 70% of people are really not engaged at work. They dread going to work every day. And so if you're one of those people, which I hope you're not, but if you are, these tips that I'm sharing with you are absolutely the place to start or the next steps for where you can start to improve how satisfied you feel. And then you start looking for ways you can incorporate some of this into the work that you're doing. Okay. So hopefully this is helpful. These are the, these are the absolute best places for you to look next for what you can do to improve your own self-actualization. Now, since we're talking about self-actualization here and learning and growing, I would invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Donna Siriani, where you can view short videos, you know, just a couple of minute videos on how to jumpstart different habits that we're talking about. So the one today that I mentioned was discover and leverage your passions. Okay. And I also would love if this episode was of value to you, I'd love to hear from you. You can jump over to the iTunes page for rate and review an episode. And I'd love to have you leave a, a quick comment there. I'd uh, love to hear from you if this was helpful. So with that, I wish you the best of luck and hopefully you will do what you love. <laughs>